All right, so um, I want to. My name is Karen August from Next Generation Trust Services. I want to welcome everybody to our webinar. Um, we are delighted to have with us Tom San Miguel, President and CEO of SGR Energy um, out of Texas. Um, he's going to uh, give a little presentation um, about global fuel, oil, and gas. Uh, and how you can invest in SGR Energy, which is very, very exciting. Um, if anybody has any questions during the presentation, because after Tom's done, I'm going to give a short little presentation on self-directed IRAs. Um, and if anybody has any questions during uh, the presentation, you can either type them in the question box in your GoToWebinar, or you can send them directly to my email, which is Karen A, as an Apple, at Next Generation Trust Services, just nextgenerationtrust.com, sorry. So it's Karen A at nextgenerationtrust.com. Um, so without further ado, I'll let Tom San Miguel take over. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Karen. And I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your clients, and I'm certain our attendees will find the information on self-directed IRAs informative and beneficial. Whether they invest in SGR Energy or not, I think every investor should have a self-directed IRA. Over the next 15 minutes, I will cover information about investing in oil and gas commodities, how to take the volatility out of oil and gas investments while getting solid returns with lower risk levels, what we do at SGR Energy, and how much capital we, we're looking to raise, and most importantly, I'm going to talk about what potential returns you could expect from us and how you get paid back. And I promise to make this as entertaining as possible. Let's start with this. Is the sky falling? Well, no, but there is a lot of volatility in the market and many 401ks have taken a beating. In my 25 years in the business, there is one thing I've learned about oil prices. There are two kinds of experts. Those who don't know where the price of oil is going and those who don't know that they don't know where the price of oil is going. Which leaves us with more questions than answers, right? Are we at a bottom, headed back up? Is there a manipulation going on? So where do you put your money? What I can tell you is that you don't have to sit idly by while your investments deteriorate or sit stagnant. Some of you may be thinking that at current crude oil pricing, the best course of action would be to stay away from an oil and gas investment. That may be the case for an oil and gas exploration and production company because they need $60 per barrel oil for their economics to work, but not for a refined products company. We are actually a hedge against low oil prices. That's because the margins in refined products business are the same whether oil is $30 per barrel or $150. When oil prices are low, exploration and production companies take a beating. However, when prices are high, they do quite well. Meanwhile, the refined product side of the industry hums along, churning out profits. We started SGR with $1 million of seed investor money in 2011. Fifteen months later, we returned that investment back to the investors with a 40% return on their money. In the four plus years we've been in business, we've generated $23 million in revenue, traded, traded over 300,000 barrels, and generated over a, pro a million dollars in profit. So who is SGR Energy? SGR Energy is a rapidly growing number six fuel oil blending company. And what does that mean to you? It means that we take residual fuels from refineries, basically the bottoms out of the plant, and blend them with lighter, cleaner burning materials to a uniform specification for power plants in the Caribbean and refineries in Asia. So what makes us special? We have a proprietary blending program to cost-effectively incorporate cleaner burning fuel oils and blend stocks for commercial and industrial burning, and we can buy these cleaner burning fuels at a 70% discount to traditional blend stocks. That's because we are experts at buying these products at a maximum profit. Remember I said that refined products business has good margins that are the same with $30 oil or $150 per barrel? Well, that's true for all except one fuel, number six fuel oil. 
This is because number six fuel oil is the only fuel that does not come out of a refinery commercially ready to sell. Different products are aggregated from multiple plants and refineries to a small blending terminal. This is where SGR can double our margins by incorporating higher margin products. When people ask me why I started a six oil company, I tell them for the same reason Dillinger robbed banks, because that's where the money is. No other segment in the industry has margins this high. Additionally, global refineries produce around 9 million barrels of residual fuel oil every day as the byproduct of the refining process. Around 4 million barrels of this is traded freely in the open market. Currently, fuel oil is plentiful, but in time, the supply constraints, increased demand from Asia, and lower carbon requirements will impact prices. With the new lower sulfur fuel standards that came into effect in 2015 and the additional lower standard requirements in 2019, power plants, shipping companies, and other industrial burners will struggle to meet these standards while keeping fuel costs down. This could have a potential profound impact on the global economy. SGR will help these power plants and other industrial burners across the globe meet these lower sulfur standards, reduce the cost of their fuel without impacting fuel quality. There is roughly over a million barrels a day of low sulfur, high margin blend stocks produced globally that can be blended with the current supply of residual fuel oil. SGR has the ability to incorporate these blend stocks in our blending process. These high margin products will increase our available supply, improve the fuel, and lower our cost. And just as important, we're in a position to make a difference in the world by producing cleaner burning fuels. Our industry is very competitive. You have a handful of smaller companies selling some of these products to the bigger blenders. The problem is that these smaller blenders are very fragmented and lack the blending expertise to blend for themselves. On the other side of the equation, the blenders, the larger blenders, are just focused on larger markets and making money in volume. We aim to consolidate this market and duplicate the process globally. What is holding SGR back from really competing with the larger blenders is we need capital to expand our business. We can continue growing successfully and generate record profits, but right now is the perfect time to invest in this market. With low oil prices, we can buy more oil with less capital, thus allowing SGR to grab greater market share. <clears throat> We've had steady revenue growth during our first four years of business marketing our fuels domestically and in the Caribbean. As you can see, in 2015, we moved about 160,000 barrels. We have secured contracts in China to supply fuel in 2016. The independent refineries in Qingdao, China, are given a crude allotment from the government, but there is a shortfall in just the three plants we're going to sell to of about 2 million barrels per month. So as you can see, that provides an opportunity for rapid expansion for SGR over the next three years. In 2014 and 2015, we focused on domestic and Caribbean expansion. We also began to add key additional hires to our team. In 2016, we will expand into Asia, Central, and South America. We project by 2019 that SGR will either be acquired by a larger blender or go public. As you can see, from 2016 to 2019, SGR will have additional capital raises. This is primarily for some acquisitions we have identified to give us greater accessibility to the higher margin blend stocks. Once SGR is funded, we can execute on these existing contracts to supply fuel to Asia. In spite of the growth slowdown, the independent refineries in China cannot get enough feedstocks. This will enable us to meet our future revenue goals. Now, let's discuss what kind of capital we are looking to raise and why. SGR is looking to raise $17 million from qualified investors to execute on existing contract opportunities. $4 million of that will be for operating capital, and the rest will be to acquire assets. Of the $4 million to be used for operating capital, 1.2 million will be used as collateral on lines of credit to buy blend stocks. 1.7 million will be used as working capital for additional tank storage, operations, 
and marketing expansion. The final 1.1 million will be used for additional vessel and barge time charters. Specifically, we have two assets we would like to acquire. The first is a terminal on the East Coast. Owning this terminal gives SGR a competitive advantage over our competition due to location, capabilities, and anonymity. The terminal already has a positive cash flow. However, we will expand and improve the property to maximize its profit capabilities. This will include some upgrades and expanding the terminal by 140,000 barrels. The cost of this will be $5.5 million. The vessel SGR will acquire will give SGR the ability to guarantee deliveries for term contracts. The spot market for vessels can be very unpredictable. In order to bid on term contracts, you must be able to guarantee delivery. Not having a vessel would be like playing tennis without a racket. This will cost about $7.5 million. One of the largest funds in the world is providing SGR with transaction funding. We have been set up by them as a co-signer at Bank of America to issue letters of credit up to $100 million. So what kind of returns can you expect for your investment? The real important part. You, can, you will get paid currently a 12% annual dividend that's paid out quarterly. Plus you own equity while the company is growing. We are projecting by 2019 that SGR will either be acquired by a larger company or will go public. We estimate the potential IPO or sale of the company in three to four years could increase the stock value of your shares to as high as $17 per share and up from there. We came to this number by multiplying our projected EBITDA for 2019 times 10. To invest or not to invest. I don't have to tell you there's a lot of volatility in the market right now. What I will tell you is there is an alternative where you can have a current 12% dividend plus a nice potential multiple on your investment after the IPO. You have a CEO that's been in the business for over 25 years. Now with every investment there is risk, but SGR is a relatively safe investment. So how is your investment protected? We take the volatility out of the equation by hedging all inventories and buy and sell off the same index to lock in our margins. We have an offtake before we ever buy our blending components, plus fixed assets are a part of the investment. If you want to take a more cautious approach, SGR will take investments as low as $10,000. We are raising $17 million by selling Class B shares at $0.75 cents per share. But after this fund closes, that's it. We project the future capital campaigns for additional acquisitions will be at a higher share price. So what's next? First, I would suggest you do your own research on the industry. Take a look at how successful Glencore, Trafigura, and Chemoil are. That can be SGR in very short order. For those of you interested in getting additional information, please call me on my cell or at the office with any questions and we can discuss whether SGR would be a suitable investment for you. You are also welcome to come by our office for a visit anytime. You can also learn more about SGR by exploring our entire website. Thank you for taking a look at the SGR opportunity and I look forward to answering any questions you may have about this opportunity. Karen, thanks again for giving us this chance to present to your clients and I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thanks so much Tommy. That was a great presentation. A lot of good good information. Um, I don't have any questions that were typed in but let me um, check my email to see if we got any in there. And it doesn't look like we did. So, but if anybody has any questions, they think the, of them while I'm going through self-directed IRAs, please don't hesitate to type your questions in so that we can answer them. Or if you think of them later on, you can email Tom. His email is right there, Tom at sgrenergy.com. Or um, you know, you can email me as well. But that was great information, Tom. Thank you so so much. 
Okay, so now let's get into self-directed IRAs. Okay, so self-directed retirement plans. This is just a basic, basic uh, presentation on investing in non-traditional assets within your retirement plan. All right, so what is Next Generation? We are local professionals located in Roseland, New Jersey, which is northern New Jersey. Uh, we are administrators and record keepers for self-directed retirement funds. And um, we allow you to use your retirement funds to invest in uh, non-traditional assets, which is a whole type of allowable assets. It opens up a whole world of things that you can invest in. Um, so we're not a bank. We're not a financial planning service. We are just a neutral third-party professionals. We educate our clients on the options that are available so that you can invest in non-traditional assets in a self-directed IRA. We don't endorse. We don't recommend. We don't sell any products or investments, and we do not give any investment advice. We just offer educational resources, just like today, um, so that clients are educated on what non-traditional assets they can invest in so that you can uh, decide on the best course of action to diversify your portfolio. Okay. And again, we don't review the merits or the legitimacy of any investment. Um, you know, we just educate you um, and we, you know, let you know the whole world of non-traditional assets that you can invest in. So what is a self-directed IRA? It allows you, like I said, to invest in non-traditional assets using your retirement plans. So investments in non-traditional assets have been around since the beginning of IRA accounts. Um, they keep your investment funds tax advantaged, so all the same rules apply for self-directed IRAs as they do for um, traditional IRAs. Um, the only difference is that it opens up a whole number of allowable investments, so rather than investing in traditional stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, you can invest in non-traditional assets. So the types of plans that can be self-directed, traditional IRAs for tax-deferred investing, Roth for tax-free investing, um, SEP for self-employed people, Simple for small businesses. You can also self-direct 401ks or qualified plans, solo Ks. You can self-direct Coverdell educational savings accounts for your children's education, not just for college, but if they're going to private school, you can use those funds and self-direct them. And health savings accounts for medical expenses. Um, so ways to fund your account, you can make a contribution of your personal funds, you can make an annual contribution. Um, you can transfer, so if you have an existing IRA uh, at a, a broker such as Fidelity or Schwab, you can transfer those funds between like accounts, so if you have a traditional there, you can transfer all or portion of your traditional IRA into a self-directed IRA. Um, if you have a 401k from a previous employer, you can roll over those funds into a self-directed IRA. So it would be a distribution from your 401k and then you would put that into a self-directed IRA. Um, you can also convert, so if you uh, move funds from um, a traditional into a traditional with us, then you could convert that traditional IRA into a Roth, pay the taxes on it. So once you start taking distributions when you retire, you can uh, have those funds tax-free. Um, this chart, it says 2015 maximum contributions, but they never changed. The IRS did not change the maximum contribution limits for 2016, so all these contribution limits are accurate. 
So for a traditional and a Roth, you are allowed to contribute uh, up to $5,500 of your personal funds into a traditional or Roth up to the age of 49. If you are 50 and older, you can contribute an extra $1,000 as a catch-up contribution. So you can contribute a total of $6,500. Um, for a self-employed individual, um, you can contribute $53,000 or 25% of your total compensation, whichever is lesser. Um, and if you were to start um, you know, a 401k, your um, your contribution can be 18,000 maximum, and then it shows at the bottom of the chart for Coverdell and health uh, savings accounts as well. There are restrictions on investments. There are what we call disqualified persons, so these people cannot personally benefit from your IRA. So you, as the IRA holder are disqualified, your spouse, your ascendants, which would be your parents and grandparents, your descendants and their spouses, your children and their spouses, um, any fiduciaries on the account, any business partners, um, they're all disqualified persons. And there are some types of assets that are prohibited that you cannot invest in with your self-directed IRA. So you can't invest in life insurance, um, you can't invest in collectibles um, such as artwork and stamps, some people like to have wine collections, the, you cannot invest those in a self-directed IRA, antiques, rugs, those are all types of investments that you are not allowed to invest in. But the possibility for investments is endless. Um, you can invest in real estate. You can invest in a company like SGR Energy. Um, you, you know, as long as the company is not a public, publicly traded company, you can invest in them. They have private stock. Uh, you can invest in mortgage notes, tax liens, um, offshore hedge funds, LLCs. Um, the list goes on and on, and it just opens up, and it's a great, great vehicle to diversify your portfolio. You know, you can still invest in your traditional stocks, bonds, mutual funds, but if you diversify, you know, it just allows your retirement funds to grow. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, that's our website. Please feel free to go on our website to get more information, www.nextgenerationtrust.com. Um, you can email me as well, Karen A, nextgenerationtrust.com. There's our phone numbers. Um, I'd be more than happy to discuss setting up a self-directed IRA if investing in SGR Energy is something you're interested in or investing in real estate, anything, any vehicles like that, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to help you out with that. And we're here to educate and, um, you know, that's what we, we want to do. I don't see any questions. Um, Karen, can yep. you hear me? Sure, yes I can. Okay. I actually had a, a question that, um, on and in, when someone invests through a self-directed IRA, I, I see where there's limits on like a Roth IRA and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. but how are there limits to how much they could invest in a private placement or like a real estate investment trust? No, there is there is no limit, and we don't okay. have we don't have a minimum requirement to open a self-directed IRA. So you know you can open the self-directed IRA with your fifty five hundred or sixty five hundred dollar uh, maximum annual contribution, and then you know if you have a four hundred one k from a previous employer or an IRA that's you know sitting there and you're not really happy with the returns that you're getting from the mutual funds that you're invested in, you can transfer those funds and further fund your self-directed IRA so that you can invest in 
SGR or real estate or whatever you want. You can also partner okay. with Thank other you. people as well. So if you're looking to get a bunch of investors together to invest in a, you know, a startup company, um, you know, and you find people that a lot, so many people have an IRA that they left when they left a job and it's just sitting there and it's continuing to, you know, get returns or sometimes even lose money and, um, you know, you can roll those funds and, you know, it's kind of like found money and then if you get two other people that have a 401k or their spouse might have a 401k from a previous employer, well now all of a sudden you have three or four people each person might have 20,000, 30,000. You can pull that money together, start up an LLC, and then have that LLC invest in SGR energy, um, real estate, you know, whatever you want. It's just, you know, and the possibilities are endless. Okay. It sounds like it. <laughs> they really are. It's, it's just a great, great vehicle. Does anybody else have any questions? I don't see any questions coming in. Tommy, I guess you and I did a great job. Nobody has any questions. <laughs> well, I'm sure that we'll get some questions from this. Yeah, and so, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, and like I said, you feel free to email Tom at Tom at sgrenergy.com or send me an email at Karen A Next Generation Trust .com. Um, You know, we would be glad to further discuss you know your personal situation with you um, we are going to have this record we did record this so I'm going to have this up on Next Generation Trust website I'm also going to give a copy to Tom so he can um, put it up on the SGR website feel free to you know watch it again and you know don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us if you have any questions I want to thank everybody for being with us today. I especially want to thank Tom for giving us that very informative presentation on SGR Energy. And uh, just have a great day, everybody. All right. Thanks, Karen. Thank you.